Ja. What you're trying to do is to is to really give life to something uh, with the clay. And that's the challenge every time. The clay, uh, you know, when you're when you're blending it on the wheel, when you're throwing it on the wheel and forming something with your hands in the clay, it's it's almost like it's alive. Well, clay's wonderful material uh, has uh, many, many, many things that I love about it. Um, its potential to be uh, anything that your imagination can dream up. It reminds me of people. It's, it has so much potential for, for uh, becoming. I was uh, an art student at Phillips University in Enid and part of the instructional over there was to take um, a pottery course so um, as soon as I saw Paul Denny the teacher um, forming it on the wheel and um, as soon as I touched it and worked with it a little bit it was really it was magical it was seductive and um, sensitive and uh, it has many many wonderful qualities um, uh, when you're working with it, it's just, uh, it begs to be played with and uh, it's impressionable. It's, it's amazingly impressionable. The clay, the material is so fluid. Something, when you're making pots, you can be, um, you can forget where time is. Uh, you can forget where the week has gone. Uh, all of a sudden it's Friday. My, my wife leaves for work in the morning at uh, 8.30 or 9 and then um, I'll see her at 6, 6.30 and um, you know it's like the day has just disappeared and all I've been doing has been out here you know making pots and um, listening to music so um, that you do go somewhere, you know, wherever that play that there is, I'm not sure, but um, I think you get in the river, you know, you get quiet and you listen to your hunches. Uh, that's what you should be doing. You should uh, listen to that little voice that says, well, look at that. Um, what can I, what can I do with that now? Um, you know, you have to listen to that quiet voice. You know, nature makes it a real pleasure when you have an insight, when you have an aha moment, um, because nature wants you to keep doing that. You know, it's, uh, you know, Nate, we're all better off with those, or you should be, I guess, uh, with those aha moments, those, those inspirational moments. And, um, it's really neat that it's a pleasure, you know, it's, you, you feel a physical pleasure when you get an idea, um, a good idea. After it's dried and fired, it, it kind of uh, turns to bones, it kind of turns hard and, and then you've got another challenge to, uh, when you glaze it and decorate it, to, the challenge is to bring it back to life and, and give it some life. So there are always mistakes, you know, well this isn't what I wanted, but look at, look at what it is and let's go with it. So of course when you get to be over 50, uh, <laughs> you find out that you've really got to make friends with your mistakes. because they're populating your life at a greater rate. What you don't do is throw it out. I mean, you do keep that. There must be a name for it in, in computer ease. 
where you uh, file. You make a file folder or something for mistakes that didn't work out, and um, you just remain. You just stay neutral over it. I mean, you don't you don't get bitter over it. You just uh, um, you know not try not to uh, make a big deal out of it. And God saw that it was good. <laughs> and she said, you are one of my weirdest creations, my son. <laughs> and he said, yeah, mom, you got that right. <laughs>